What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. So today I want to talk to you about the deadlift. And, what, and what's sparking this discussion here today is a recent appearance by strongman Robert Oberst on Joe Rogan's podcast. Now, I actually didn't need the viewers to alert me to this as they have because I actually listened to the podcast. I'm a fan of Joe's podcast. C.T. Fletcher's been on there. Sylvester Stallone's going to be on there. I listen to it often. There's a lot of content in this particular podcast, but one thing in particular that has people kind of bent and they want to know what I think about it is this particular statement. So I don't want to take anything out of context. I want to just play it for you so you can listen to it for yourself. I went from football to strongman, and in football, we'd never done deadlifts. It was all hand cleans and power cleans, which, by the way, just a quick little tip, deadlifts, if you're, if you're deadlifting to be a better deadlifter, fine. If you're not doing that for deadlift's sake, then don't fucking do it. The risk-to-reward ratio is a joke. For deadlifts? For deadlifts. Really? And a lot of people aren't going to like that I'm saying that. But if you go into any NFL uh, gym, in any Division One college football gym, in any athletics where people are actually getting paid and it matters what they're doing, they're not deadlifting. Really? They're hand cleaning and power cleaning. Why is that? Because the the risk to reward ratio, like well, there's it's so hard to be a great deadlifter and to not risk your low back and oh. to to be using your upper back properly and you know, just there's so many little uh um chances for you to get hurt, you know. All right guys, now before you go and try to jump down Robert's throat or assume what I'm gonna say in response to that, I think we have to do a couple things. Number one, we're gonna have to apply some context to what he said, and we'll do that in a second. And number two, we're going to have to start with the admission that, guys, I'm actually obviously somebody that has already buried a few exercises myself. I threw willfully a couple exercises into my iron graveyard to never be performed again. And one of them being the upright row, which is a shit exercise then, will be a shit exercise in the future, and is a shit exercise now. And I'll say that because, as we know, you are literally fighting your own body's anatomy to perform it, and we have alternatives that provide even a better response nullifying the reason that we would ever have to do it in the first place. And we can say the same thing about the behind the neck shoulder press. Neither of those are necessary and I think they deserve to be dead and buried. However, when it comes to the deadlift, that is not something I would ever say. I believe the deadlift is one of the most fundamental movement patterns, let alone training exercises. The deadlift is something that we all need to be able to incorporate into our training programs and figure out a way to strengthen ourselves, but the right way. Which leads us to some of the context here of to what Robert's talking about. And I'll start with sort of the professional athlete side of it because I think what he's saying there's, there's, a, there's a lot of truth and merit to that. As a matter of fact, I've been in a lot of professional sports weight rooms. I've been a lot, around a lot of professional athletes and trained a lot of professional athletes. And I'll tell you this, one of the revelations you learn early on is they're not the best lifters. A lot of times they don't even have great form in the weight room. They didn't get there by being great lifters. They got there because of their innate talents. They got there because of their athleticism. They got there because of their ability to actually compensate their way there. Right? They're masters of compensation. They're able to overcome things that we may not be able to, to still excel and perform. And a lot of times what you're left with is guys that come to the weight room that are limited in a lot of different ways. And sometimes not forcing everybody to perform a lift because you know how valuable that lift is, is one of the best ways a strength coach can go. I know the Oakland Raiders, my buddy is a strength coach out in the Oakland Raiders, not everybody deadlifts straight from the floor. There's guys that are 6'8", 320 pounds, to guys that are defensive backs and skill position players that lift a bit differently and approach the lift a bit differently, and their bodies align differently when they go there. And again, if you realize that, guys, unfortunately, the truth of the matter is they're not all getting there as great lifters. Like I said, they might have been, their, their high school years, their formative years, the first time they ever learned the deadlift, could have been founded on a foundation that was severely cracked because nobody ever instilled in them the right way to do it. And they brought that with them to college and they brought that with them to the pros. And while you try to intervene, it's not always something you're capable of actually intervening on because as I said before, even their ability to master the compensation here can actually hide some of those cracked flaws in their foundation. So what they do in the Raiders is they actually, they, they, they lift with mats off the floor. They put half inch mats and they might elevate a few mats, two, three, four mats to allow the weights to come a little bit off the floor to let them get into a better body position. Not, not foregoing the deadlift altogether, but even as Robert said, the exercises he said, yes, they'll perform those as well because they could provide some additional benefits that might not subject somebody to the risk. He talked about the risk-reward ratio. There's a, that's a real issue, guys, when you're talking about people that are being paid to play, to being paid to play and who can excel at the highest levels without necessarily having an 800-pound deadlift. What is the risk of actually pushing somebody in that direction? 
Is it going to get them stronger? Of course. But if there's other ways to get them stronger and more powerful, maybe you don't go down that road because you don't want to compromise somebody's career that way. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we talk about the context. The context is as of the speaker, as a professional strongman, Robert's looking at this from a different perspective. He's looking, at, he's looking out for us. He's looking out for you. He knows that for him, it, the, the risk-reward ratio is actually different. For him, the reward was higher. He could win a competition. He could actually sacrifice his form just a little bit if it meant getting up another 10, 20 pounds on a lift because it could mean the difference for him between winning and losing. When you add some competitiveness to this and overlie the performance of that lift, there's a different drive, there's a different motivator. But for him, it led to some other issues, obviously breakdown. This is something he's doing repetitively and he's doing it for a living. It leads to breakdown. These are not the same things that we would have to consider. But it brings me back to this overall point. The deadlift is a great exercise. The deadlift is a fundamental movement pattern, but the deadlift should be done responsibly. And it's one of those exercises that because of the loading parameters here, because we can load it up a lot as we're pursuing strength on that lift, we have to understand this one critical factor, and that is it's not the number of the plates on the side of the bar that will ultimately determine your strength. What matters the most is that the true strength underlying that is built on a foundation of stability. And I've said this before, I talked about it, guys, as the new way to look at the pyramid of strength. At the base of what we do, the most of what we do, is always going to be founded on strength. But if you ignore that bottom there, underneath the surface, that iceberg effect, where stability resides, then you're going to miss out and you're going to likely wind up hurting yourself. Because the true strength is always going to be built upon a foundation of stability. What are we talking about with stability? Because it's not what you might think I'm talking about. Some of you guys are probably saying, no, wait, Jeff, you're just talking about form. Good form versus bad form. And we never advocate bad form on a, on a deadlift. That's not actually what I'm talking about. In the gross evidence of that, yes, it is. In other words, if I was going to go grab the bar, and as soon as I lift a weight that's somewhat more than what I can you know, comfortably handle, if I lose my scapular tightness to the point where my arms start to protract out in front of me, which will drag my thoracic spine into flexion, which because the spine is one unit, starts to drag my lumbar spine into flexion, in which I'm applying an incredible load onto my, my lumbar discs, where, boom, I can pop one just like that. That's an obvious form breakdown. That's a lack of, it, of stability. That's an obvious example of that. That's not even what I'm talking about. I talked about the masters of compensation. I talked about the fact that somebody could actually execute a deadlift here in great form and still lack stability. How would that happen? Well, you could do all the things I said. You could keep the scapula tight. You cannot have your thoracic rounding. You cannot have your lumbar spine rounding but you can actually have an unequal distribution of weight between your feet. When you perform lift, I actually had an athlete come to me like that, complaining of hip pain, everything looked perfect on the deadlift itself. But when we evaluate them with force plates, you can tell that there's an there's a unequal weight distribution between the right and left side. Is that a lack of stability? I think so. That's not a stable unit lifting that. You need to have a stable unit from the ground up equally distributing your weight as you perform the lift. That's a solid system. But if you're talking about this unequal distribution of weight that doesn't manifest itself in bad form, but it manifests itself underneath, this is when we need to start to evaluate at a little bit more critical level. This is when we need to appreciate the value of true stability. So what am I recommending? I'm recommending you deadlift. I'm recommending you learn how to deadlift at an early age. I'm hoping that exercise tutorials like the one I have on our channel for the deadlift and others as well who've covered the deadlift in great ways with a great breakdown teaches you how to perform the lift in your earlier years the right way so that when you're adding plates as you should be trying to you're doing it on a strong foundation not built off of a cracked foundation way too many cracked foundations out there these days follow the advice of coaches that know nothing about coaching a lift that tell you just to get stronger on the lift that is a horrible coach and one you should never listen to what you need to do is you need to learn how to respect that lift as well as other lifts, realizing that sometimes you got to start at the bottom. And when you start at the bottom, you got to build that base. And that base is not just the strength, but it's the stability beneath that. And when you have that combination, guys, and then you add plates around that, you're going to be able to perform that lift properly. And more importantly, you'll be able to perform that lift for life and without the repercussions that maybe even Robert talked about here. And without the necessary drive to push it to extremes, 
that he might have to because of the competitive overlay for it and the, the extra drive of which he might have to face because this is something he did for a living and the winning and losing is something that factored into it as well. So I love what he said. I thought it was a great podcast, by the way. And like I said, I recommend if you guys haven't heard it to go listen to it because he had some incredible things to say. I think his perspective on the sport and I think his perspective on not just that lip but other things is something that you would benefit from hearing. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking for programs where we actually try to do what we do, based off of that solid foundation. I realize how important it is. I preach it here because it matters, guys. I've seen far too many athletes break down because of exactly what Robert's talking about. We don't need to have that happen and we don't need to forego the deadlift at the same time. So guys, if you look for those programs, they're all over at athletex.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what I'm gonna cover. I'll do my best to do that for you. And if you haven't already done so, guys, please subscribe and turn your notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.